Hey guys, I'm Matt. Welcome to Speed Tutor, and today we're going to be looking at creating a health or heart based system. And you can see this in popular games like Zelda, Binding of Isaac, Minecraft, and things where you have a heart based sprite, you take damage, you lose one of those hearts and you could then potentially do something to gain it again if that's what you wanted to do. All it's going to take is one sprite for the heart icon that you might like. Then we'll look at the C-sharp and I'll show you a really refined way to do it to be able to take damage, give health back and do whichever way you would like it to be. So here we are in my project here, I've just got some basic starter content which I've just got the Unity default standard asset robot that moves around and I've got a bomb that I found online and it's just set as a sprite. You don't need any of these to do this, this is just to show the base example working for you. And all I've got in my sprites is a heart which is white, so when you've got your heart sprite you can set the colour within Unity without you having to set the colour within an object yourself so if, as long as it's white we can set it to blue, green, red, whatever we may want to and that's what we're going to do today. So what we can do is we can right click, choose UI, create a canvas I'm going to just call this health canvas I'm just going to set this to scale with screen size and I'm going to set it to 1920 by 1080 that just makes sure everything's sized nicely I'll select the canvas, press F on the scene view so we can look at the entire canvas. What I'm going to do is I'm going to right click UI and choose image. We're going to have one single image which will be 100 by 100 and I will go to my sprite and just add the heart sprite in here. So you can see that it's currently white as we expect. Now I will move this up into the top corner up here and then what I will do is I will anchor this to the top left and we'll set that to a red colour. So now you can see in my preview down here, it's red and up here. What we'll do is we'll just call this heart1. I'm going to duplicate this for as many hearts as you would want to have in your particular game. So in my case, I'm going to duplicate it 10 times. And then what I like to do is it on the left hand side in the hierarchy, if you just rename them to heart123 all the way to 10, just to make life easier for yourself. Now we've done that, we need a way to control how many actually sprites we're going to show and what we're going to do with each of those sprites so we'll right click in the project go create and we'll choose c sharp and we'll just call this health controller we'll open that up in visual studio so once we're in our script we need to have a namespace of using unity engine.ui and this is going to allow us to access the image or the components that we need we're going to have a public integer and we'll call this player health with a semicolon so this is going to be how much health the player may have we're also going to have a serialized field in square brackets. We're going to set this private image with two square brackets. So we'll create an array of the amount of hearts that we will have. We'll create private void start. So this is what we'll do as soon as the game starts. So here we want to be able to maybe update our health. So we're going to create a method to do that. And that will happen only on the start. We don't want to do it in any other method because we only want to tell it to update it when we need it, i.e. if we take damage that's when we update it, in no other instance should we update it because we don't need to. So we can write public void update health with two brackets then two curly brackets below and we're going to write a for loop. This is going to search through all the different hearts that we've got and update the colours according to the amount of health we've got. So we can say for integer, we'll create a local variable, call this i, set that equal to zero, add a semicolon. If i is ever less than hearts.length, then we'll have a semicolon and we'll say i++. plus plus. And we'll close that up and add two curly brackets below. It just searches through that array for as long as i is less than the hearts.length, we'll tick i up until it's above and then it'll stop. Now what we can do is we can say that if i is ever less than the player health at any point, then we'll add two curly brackets below and we can say that hearts and then in square brackets we can say i and then we can say dot color is equal to color dot red. So that just means that for as long as the value of i is less than the player health, we're going to set all the hearts to red because that health will be available. Then in any other instance we'll have an else statement and say that hearts in square brackets i dot color is equal to color dot black. So in this case, if i is above the player health, that means that health will have been lost. 
So now in our start method, we can just get rid of those two comments and we can call this method here. Now we can go back into Unity, create an empty game object. We could call this health controller two, just so that's something that controls our health. We could add it to the player, it doesn't matter. Drag health controller there. We can say that the player health in our case here is 10. Then we've got hearts and we need to add all the hearts to the array. So what we can do is we can press the little padlock to lock it. So we can just left click and hold shift and drag from the top onto the actual array title that lights up and it'll add them all in. We can unlock it now and you can go back to the health controller. You can see that everything is there. What I can do is I could set my health player health to five, press play in this instance here and you'll be able to see that now five pieces of health are available and five not. So you can currently see that that's what happens. Now, that's great. We can go as low or as maximum as the amount of health that we require, but what happens when we need to damage our player? So this bomb, how do we use it? So we'll create another script, C sharp, and we'll call this damage controller. We'll open up in Visual Studio, get rid of the two starting methods. And then in here, what I'm going to write is serialize field again, private integer, and I'm going to call this bomb damage. Could be damage, whatever you may want it to be. Then we'll have another serialized field, private health controller. So this is that script that we just looked for. And I'm just going to write a underscore and call it health controller. So I know which is my variable and I know which is the actual name of the script. Then we're going to write private void on a trigger enter. In this case, it's 2D. And then if I press tab, it auto completed it for me. And in the brackets, we have a parameter of collider 2D and we give that a name of collision. And if it was not a 2D game, you could just delete the 2D from it and that would work fine. Now we can say that if collision dot compare tag in quotes and then we'll say we'll say player. So if it finds the player when we collide with it, we're gonna to want to run another method. So I'm just gonna write damage for now. So this is that's the method that I'm going to create. So down here below our on trigger enter 2D, we'll just write void damage. Two brackets, then two curly brackets below. And in this case we're gonna a underscore health controller dot player health because it was a public in this script so we could access it elsewhere and we'll set that equal to underscore health controller dot player health minus our bomb damage finding the player health from the other script then setting it equal to whatever the player health is at that current time minus the bomb damage but that's all well and good it'll update that variable but we need to actually update it visually so again we'll need to do health controller dot update health which was the method in our previous script if i go to that you can see that was a public void update health so we can access that from elsewhere we can call that method to run this code to update the amount of health and whatnot we have in there and then we can just write game object dot set active is false so it'll just make sure the bomb has disappeared the time we use it so now we can unhide this comment and it's going to launch this method for us. Now we can go on back into our scene, go to our bomb object, which you need to make sure that your bomb object has a collider 2D rigid body. And then we're going to add our damage controller script. You can see that bomb damage is zero. We can set that equal to one. We need to add our health controller in here. We can press play in our case here. And when I run into the object, you can see that I lost one of my portions of health because I ran into the bomb. Now we could just essentially, in our case, either make the bomb equal to do two damage, or we could just grab lots of different versions of the bomb, place it around, do it like that, and we can do any instance or any version of that to take away the damage. And in our case, we can also say that when we update our health, we can just say that any point above our loop, if we say that if, player health is ever less than or equal to zero. So if we've at any point died, we can restart the game. We could respawn the player, anything we may want to do when you've lost your health. So hopefully this helped you out create a basic health system with hearts. You can get this project on my Patreon and you can get all the scripts and all my tutorials on there too. Let me know what you think of this tutorial. See, to let me know if you want to see more like this. Come and join me on Discord. Come and check out my great assets on the Unity Store. And thanks so, so much for watching the tutorials. 
don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Cheers.